Model making doesn't always go to plan. Sometimes a mistake can have terrible consequences and leave you probably feeling quite upset. When you start out on your model making journey you are likely to encounter many problems and unfortunately even experienced model makers will encounter some hardships from time to time. So I thought I'd tell you about a time when I made a mistake whilst making a model, one that hurt me quite badly, and but how I was able to ultimately sound it and finish my model in a different but still very interesting manner. I hope you enjoy. So, here's the kit, and uh, I've already opened this bit uh, uh, due to reasons, and inside it you will find uh, one bag of paints and glue, the instruction booklet, um, a bag of screws, a paintbrush size 2, and inside the instruction manual, some decals. In the bag we have a couple of part screws. Just get them out. <laughs> On sprue A we have the top wings uh, and some parts down here. I believe these are mostly the landing gear sections. Uh, this is sprue B. This has some different landing gear. If you're having the wheels up, I'm not. Um, and uh, of course, we have the body shell and also the landing gear doors, uh, the exhaust pipes, and some outlets for the engine, amongst some other things. On sprue C, we find the lower wings, uh, the pilot. Uh, and uh, some cockpit detail, uh, another part for the uh, engine manifold inlet thingy, and uh, some other parts. And finally, uh, on sprue D, we find uh, the inside of the cockpit, the back rudder, uh, the propeller parts, the tail wheel, and the underside of the plane's fuselage. We also have sprue F. Not sure where sprue E went, but sprue F is uh, the transparencies, and in it you will find uh, the landing gear, the landing light, uh, the bleepy side light things, um, uh, two, uh, I'm not sure what the difference is, but you'll find uh, two uh, front glass pieces. That one's a bit scratched, so I won't use that. And the uh, top glass. Also in the box, you will get a small five milliliter tube of poly cement, which is all you really need. Uh, some number 29, number 30, number 33, and number 90 paints. And a sheet which contains all of about 11 decals. Uh, uh, these are all printed as one, uh, so they're much easier to manoeuvre, and uh, that's about it, pretty much. They're very good quality, uh, printing is nice, uh, everything's pretty well aligned. Yeah, now everything you see here is pretty much all you need to make the entire kit. Uh, the only thing you really need that isn't supplied is this craft knife. It can be any craft knife, not just specifically this one. This is a pretty rubbish one, to be honest. Uh, but this is all you need. However, I am going to uh, show you some more things which will help enhance uh, your build should you pl should you choose to uh, use them. Uh, I'm going to try to be as simple as possible. Uh, these are not mandatory. These are just suggestions, basically. First up are some paints. Uh, these are of course the ones supplied in the box and they're all you really need, however, to enhance the model a bit more uh, I would suggest 78 Humbrol Cockpit Green 61 Flesh Acrylic Well, these are all acrylic uh, 96 RAF Blue Not sure which one I'll get, end up with, but 171 and or 12 uh, Metallic uh, I believe Copper and Antique Bronze Number 11 silver, number 53 gunmetal, 
and uh, two other paints. Uh, these are clear paints, uh, and that's uh, obviously Vallejo model color, green and red, transparent. Next up are some glues, which uh, can be useful because uh, the poly cement is uh, a bit uh, hard to use at times. It can be a bit thick, and a lot can come out of the tube at once. So some things you might want are contact cement with a applicator no no with an applicator nozzle there we go liquid poly cement this is humbrol liquid poly there's also tamia extra thin and its variants for uh, clear parts uh, you might want to use uh, super glue uh, this one's got a small applicator nozzle and you squeeze it uh, here to get glue to come out. Uh, that's also useful for some other extra detailing. And also some clear fix, uh, which can be used on transparent parts without fogging them up, which uh, poly cement can cause. If you intend to uh, weather the kit and in other ways just do some extra detail, you'll probably want some acrylic varnish spray. Uh, this one is satin, but you might want to do gloss, uh, but don't do matte because that's a terrible surface to apply things to. Uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, that allows you to uh, uh, seal weathering in without smudging it if it's in dust form or it's reactive to uh, paint brushes. Uh, as for weathering materials, uh, we have some enamel paint, and uh, you can actually hold on. Uh, where is it? Yep. Here somewhere. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, here it is. All right. Uh, that can come with uh, thinners, which you will need to uh, water down the paint. Uh, Humbrol does make this, I've got a Revel tin. Uh, you can use white spirit on this to thin it out as well, however, don't make it too strong, otherwise it can react with the paint. And you want to do, you want to apply the uh, enamels uh, about a, a decent amount of time after you've uh, you've uh, dried the uh, acrylics and after you've applied the varnish, I give it 12 to 24 hours. So there's a bit of waiting. Um, uh, uh, for a bit of potential uh, shading of the panel lines, uh, you might find a uh, 6B pencil and a uh, what this is called a rubbing stick useful uh, you could also use a cotton bud uh, for the decals uh, some humbrol decal fix can be useful and uh, that allows them to set into the panel lines and blend in better uh, with uh, the rest of the paint it makes it sort of look like uh, they're actually sort of painted on instead of just being sheets of plastic stuff. And finally, uh, there is an antenna wire on top of the plane, uh, which you can just about see there. Uh, not as clear here, but it is there. And uh, uh, for that, you will want some string, which I'm going to wave in front of the camera. There it is. And uh, that can be used for the antenna wire, and you can use super glue to glue that onto the antenna and the wing tips, the end of the rudder. And also, there's some weathering powder here. This comes in uh, six colours, inclu including uh, Schlamgrün, Tiefschwartz, Dunkelbraun, Sandgelb, Schneeweeb and rostrot and uh, these can be used to add sort of dust, rust and smoke weathering like you can see on here 
from all the, the the smoke, I guess. And uh, yeah, uh, and of course you can't brush over those, so uh, this is why you need spray varnish, so you don't end up smearing the uh, dust or smudging it. And that's all we really need. Uh, that's uh, just the basic weathering materials. You can complete the optional uh, and can apply if you want. Finally, I have some extra tools which I think will help you a lot um, as well as uh, making the overall quality of your model higher. Uh, of course, we have our craft knife already, uh, which doesn't come with the kit. Probably should. Uh, maybe it's a bit dangerous for children. However, something useful is a pipette, and that could be used for uh, doling out thinners or uh, water or paint and other things. Uh, I've got a collection of files which might come in handy for sanding things down. Also for sanding things down, uh, sanding sticks or sandpaper. This is a two-sided one that comes in 600 grit and 1000 grit on either side. Uh, a mixing pot for paint. You can tell that I've used this one a, a lot uh, over the past year or so. I think this might have been a like a. I think this was the lid off of a coffee jar at one point. Uh, some plastic putty. Uh, this allows you to sand down panel lines, or and uh, you can use it to fill gaps in. Uh, in your models and then you can sand that down and it'll look like there was uh, no gaps there at all so like sometimes if you join the fuselage halves together they won't be quite aligned you can add some putty along the seam and then uh, you can fix that and uh, other useful things include some tweezers which are very useful for grabbing tiny little parts like this and that potentially um, uh, some masking fluid can be useful for masking off uh, clear parts or parts that you don't want to be uh, covered. Um, uh, if you don't want to use that, uh, you can just use masking tape. However, for some of these parts, uh, they are angled weirdly and it might take a while to cut them out. Or you can just apply the, all the clear parts uh, after. Uh, you've painted everything else potentially, which might be the easier route. I might I might do that uh, But who knows you'll have to find out later in the video. Sorry, and finally The uh, the last useful thing is to have a good variety of brushes uh, some of them can be uh, Wide flat brushes. These are useful for large areas. Some of them are fine and can be used on small areas some of them are sort of fanned out, admittedly through lack of care. Uh, some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, some of them are smoother, some of them are rougher, uh, but all of them can have their uses when it comes to constructing a model. And with that, uh, that's about all you need. And um, I think that uh, we will soon, in due course, be able to get on with building. This kit came together very well. After painting the internal areas in cockpit green and silver, I set about constructing the cockpit area for installation. I also constructed the wings which were very cleverly constructed. The foot plates are a part of the top wing surfaces and the control stick and pedals can be installed into them with relative ease. Once together, you have what is essentially a full wing module which can simply be slotted into the fuselage. I painted this little gas cylinder in number 53 gunmetal instead of number 90 sky slash beige green as shown on the instructions to add some extra detail and variation in the colours. Once the wing module was done, I inserted it into the fuselage. There was some difficulty here as I had already installed the pilot and I could not get the control tick between his legs so I pulled it out and reinstalled it from the top of the fuselage once it was together. The lower rear end of the plane is its own part, mitigating the need for a seam line, and once that was in place, the main construction was complete. Painting of this model went very well. 
The underside was painted Humble number 90 Sky Matte Acrylic, which had good coverage and went down after just a few thin coats. The texture of the wings simulating their dope linen construction really helped the paint stick better, I think. After masking off the underside, I painted number 29 Dark Earth onto the top, before freehanding on the colourage scheme using the box art as reference. I installed the intakes and landing gear which I had pre-painted earlier, and then applied a satin spray coat to ready the surface for applying decals. This is a starter kit, so it came with a very simple decal scheme. There are about 12 decals by my count, all of them being large and easy to apply. After wetting the whole sheet in warm water at once, I placed them all down in the correct positions on the plane. As it doesn't have much in the way of panel lines, using decal fix was a bit redundant here. Once they were dry, I sealed them in with another layer of varnish. And this is where it all went horribly wrong. So the next step is, um, as usual, um, weathering. Um, so all you'll need for this is um, some thinners, enamel thinners, or you can use white spirit potentially, and, uh, and uh, some black or related colour enamel paint. Uh, and uh, Hold on. First, you obviously have to pry open this little tin. Tinlet. Tin. You shouldn't do it with this. The, the strand will go everywhere, and you'll lose an eye probably. Um, so just hold on. There we go. I feel weirdly smart for thinking of that. Though probably everyone's thought of it already. And uh, you'll need to prepare, I'll just get rid of the liquid that's already in it. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we need that as well. And um, uh, you'll want a little brush. This is getting very frayed, but a uh, small brush, OO or triple O size. Should be fine. And you'll just want to get a little bit or a decent amount of the uh, of the paint in here. And uh, grab your enamel thinners and uh, you want to uh, add a couple drops until it sort of begins to become quite a uh, dilute. So there we go. So that's looking uh, probably uh, liquidy enough, we could probably add a little bit of uh, more paint into there, but uh, sort of mixed around, uh, oh, <laughs> mixed around in here, and it's sort of looking quite sort of, quite runny consistency, and now all we have to do is dab it into the panel lines, and through capillary action, should run along them. As a matter of fact, we should probably add a little bit more because it's not running very well, to be honest. So, we'll add a little bit more, uh, add a little bit more in, and uh, start damming it along in certain areas. And uh, a satin finish helps because uh, it makes paints a little bit runnier. And, uh, yeah, um, And uh, now we can use a uh, 
Where is it? Um, fuck. Now we can use a cotton bud with some of the thinner on it and just Maybe a bit too much actually. So, uh, there we go. It turned out that Humbrol and Hamilton is are not, in fact, just white spirit in a different package, and are actually significantly stronger. They, right through my hard applied paint and in other places, caused it to blister terribly. By the time it had dried out, all the hard work I put into this kit seemed completely ruined, and this actually made me really upset. It sucked to see it happen, and in the moment, salvaging any of it seemed completely impossible. It hurt because I was finally feeling more confident and proficient as a modeler after a year of honing my skills, and now I felt doubt as to whether I was really that good after all. But after taking a few days away from it to clear my mind, and some helpful advice and kind words from people both in real life and on the internet, I sat down and got to work salvaging the kit. First, I got some very fine 2000 grit sandpaper and with delicate light strokes began to sand off some of the dried enamel paint and smooth out areas where the paint was badly blistered. Eventually, I managed to mostly even out the finish. Next, I placed some primer on areas where paint had completely peeled off. Looking at photos of unpainted hurricanes, I worked out that these areas in green are made of metal and the areas in red are made of doped linen. As such, I painted the damaged areas in colours that corresponded with the colour of the materials underneath the paint on the real plane. I also drilled some small holes into some areas to mimic bullet holes, just to make the plane look really battle-scarred. Having repaired the plane to a degree that satisfied me, I varnished over the paint again and got to applying weathering. Using some white spirit this time, I reapplied the panel line wash to dirty up the plane, and thankfully this time round I encountered no problems with the paint reacting. Definitely going to stick with white spirit in the future. I used silver paint on the end of a cocktail stick to apply chipping to the model heavily around the wing roots and engine panels to make the plane look much used. I made heavy use of black weathering powder around the machine guns, engine and damaged areas to give the effect of the plane being hot off the heels of an intense dogfight. Then finally was able to seal in the weathering, slot in the propeller and complete the model. The finished mold of this Hawk Hurricane turned out surprisingly well, I think. I was able to adapt the damage I dealt to it very decently and something very intriguing, creating a worn and weary plane with a bit of a story to tell. The intense weathering looks very cool and captures the weary but strong spirit of this fighter, one considered quite past its prime even during its period of active service but excelling nonetheless, and ultimately culminates in a model I feel very proud of in spite of its flaws. I hope that this video might have helped some of you. I hope it has shown that even when something goes wrong and you're beating yourself up because you think it's unsalvageable, you can always do something to fix your model. You might even make something even better. Beginners will suffer hardships like this all the time, but hey, I've been doing this for over a year and I still managed to mess it up. We're all going to make mistakes, but it's how we learn from them and handle them that matters. This model isn't perfect, but I'm proud I was able to save what I could. The parts fit together beautifully, and I would highly recommend buying it. Just don't build it how I did, maybe? <laughs>